Hello, this is lesson two in domain four. The read aloud is called Writing in Mesopotamia. The day after Idin and his father, Wared, had their conversation about King Hammurabi, Idin and his older brother, Amor, were out kicking a leather ball. When the boys went inside to cool off, they found their father, Wared, sitting at a wide table in the sunny central courtyard around which the house was built. On the table lay several tablets, smooth rectangles made of clay. Wedge-shaped symbols were pressed into the clay. This sort of writing is called cuneiform. What are you reading, Father? Amar asked. Wared looked up and smiled. This first tablet shows how much cloth we have sold this month in our store. The other shows how much we sold during the same time last year. I am comparing the numbers, deciding how much cloth I will need to buy from the weaver for the store next week. These sorts of records help me remember how much we sold last year. Otherwise, I would probably forget. Idin sat down on a wooden bench next to the table. Father, he asked, who figured out how to write in the first place? Who decided what each symbol meant? Before Wared could answer, Amur said, the king did. Isn't that right, father? King Hammurabi can do anything. Wared said gently, well, Amur, our king has done many wonderful things, but someone else made up writing even before the king was born. And Eden, I'm afraid we don't know exactly who it was that figured out how to write and decided what each symbol should mean. Eden laughed. Maybe they should have kept a record on clay, tablets, and cuneiform. Wared laughed too. Well, whoever it was did us all a great favor. <clears throat> if we couldn't write, it would be harder to remember information for long periods of time. Idin interrupted. Like how much cloth you sold last year? Wared smiled. Like how much cloth I sold last year? People around here, between the Tigris and the Euphrates, rivers have known about writing for nearly 1,500 years. That's important. In fact, King Hammurabi may not have invented writing, but he had a great idea about how to use it. Hammurabi was so powerful that he made up a set of rules or laws for people to live by so that they would know how to behave in different situations. Then he had his scribes write them down. Actually, your uncle, my brother, is one of the scribes who helped the king write down the laws of our country. This set of laws is called the Code of Hammurabi. There are 282 laws in all. That's a lot of laws, exclaimed Idin. That must have taken uncle and the other scribes a long time to write. He hesitated. How did uncle get to be a scribe anyway? Our father, your grandfather, was a scribe, and that is why all our family members can read and write. Your grandfather taught your uncle, and he taught me. We are lucky that we know how to read and write, and if your uncle and the others had not written down all of the laws of King Hammurabi, who could remember all 282 of them? It then finished. <clears throat> exactly, said Wared. Amur, what do you think would happen if we couldn't remember the laws? The older boy said, if we couldn't remember the laws, people wouldn't follow the same rules. Someone visiting another town might break that town's rules without even knowing it. Wared said, and Idin, what if I gave you one set of rules and I gave Amur a different set of rules? That wouldn't be fair, said Idin, unless I liked my rules better than his. They all laughed. Then Amur said, 
I like writing for another reason, too. After Uncle visited us, I wrote down that story he told us about getting caught in a sandstorm in the desert and how they had to lie down and cover their heads when the strong wind blew the sand all around them so hard. I read it to Eden last night. Eden smiled. Maybe you should write a story about us, Amur. His brother thought about it. Then he answered, That is a funny idea, Eden. Who would want to read a story about us? Then the boys went back outside to play some more. All right, that's the end. Be sure to check out the next story.